take it from you. Okay, so, Ed. Yes. How did you first start reading comics, and what were the events that brought you to Comic Book Jones? Well, I uh, started reading comics, uh, DC Silver Age. Uh, you know, I, I kill myself because I would cut up the covers and glue them onto my desk. Uh -huh. You know, so I have a great mind, I have a great looking desk, mm -hmm. but I look at the value of those comics today, and I'm yeah. like, what do uh -huh. I do? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was basically, uh, I would always keep a small pocket dictionary by my desk wherever I was reading. And uh, you know, you read a word in the comic, I didn't know it, and then have to go look it up immediately. What does annihilate mean? Right, right. <laughs> and I tell kids today to come into the, that's how I learned to read. Yeah. Uh, really was through no, comic too. books. Yeah. Same here. But you gotta have the dictionary there too, you know. You yeah. Can't just, well, I don't you know, know that word, I'll just go keep going, you know. <laughs> yeah. There's so many kids like that, you know. They, I know kids that come in, they don't even they just look at the pictures because their yeah. reading skills are like zero, you know. What brought me here? Well, you know, Sako, uh, but uh, actually, what brought me here originally was uh, industrial television. Yeah, industrial Woo! television! Woo! Uh, those of you who are uh, unfamiliar with the show, the uh, public access show uh, featuring uh, clips of strange trailers and uh, the training films and so on. So uh, it's, it's, it's basically just something we wanted to see. That was the basis of the show. Was something we wanted to see. You see, and I, I, I got to tell you, when I, when I first started watching that, I'd say after like the third time that I watched with my roommate Stu, uh, uh, that's that's exactly what I had said. I said these guys are just showing a shit that they fucking dig, right? You know, and it, and that's awesome. And it remind, you know what? It reminded me a lot of DJ, except you guys, you, you know what I mean? It's like. Because when you want to DJ, it's like you want to share the music you dig with other people. Right. Now, we don't care if anyone watched it. <laughs> this is basically something we wanted to see, and we could do it, you know? And yeah. another thing about the show was, uh, you know, it's not about us. Mm -hmm. We would pop in with a, a reaction or a comment, but it was mainly, I mean, we were on screen probably one, two minutes out of an hour. So it's really about the stuff we're showing, or supposedly watching. That, that's what the show is. It's really not mm -hmm. about us. As opposed to every other show on that goddamn channel. <laughs> yeah. It's all about the people. They just want to see themselves. On oh, TV, absolutely. You know? Well, that's that's the beauty of public access, and that's what I enjoy about it. <laughs> These people no, it just feeding their egos. It does have that train wreck. Uh, a lot of the other shows, you just there, you're like, I can't change the channel. Yeah. yeah. This is, what's going to happen next? It's so bad. It's so unprofessional. It's so bad. I mean, if you've ever seen industrial TV, I. You, you, you may think I'm crazy for saying this, but like if you watch public access and you're watching it, and you're watching it, and you're watching it, and then industrial TV comes on, and you're like, oh, quality television. Right. <laughs> it was, it was like the PBS of fucking of, of CCTV, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, we we always uh, took it more seriously than uh, you know, other people because we always were a stickler for uh, production values. Yeah, you know? I, I actually never saw industrial TV. Could you give me an example? Ooh. Ooh. Give me an example oh, of like yes. what kind of clips you'd uh, yeah we show a lot of bad trailers from bad movies people many times have come up to us and, oh those movies real they were all real they were all those movies <laughs> and uh, you, sometimes the trailers are the best part you don't want to have to really sit through those whole movies <laughs> yeah. like, they're horrible you know? but the trailers you can get the best minute or two out of it and uh, that's what it was about the uh, trailers uh, the training films uh, how to behave on a date. How to Survive a Nuclear Blast, uh, uh, <laughs> Driver's Ed uh, scare films from the 60s, you know, you don't draw any kind of scare films. If you do this, this will happen to you. Yeah. You know, drug scare films. Right, like right. a la Reef of Madness. Right. Right. Did, those, you just, those, like, did you raid AV rooms from high schools? Or? No, actually when we started it came from our collections. We had each easily six to eight hundred hours of material between Brian and I's collections. No. I mean, now was it all? Was it all on VHS? Yes, most. Okay, no, so no. did you have some to convert? Was on beta. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's how old some of the stuff. Good for Beta, yeah. <laughs> but like nothing that you had to convert from reel to reel at that time. Nobody ever sent you because I know people would send you stuff, right? After the third or fourth year, people started sending us shit, and that's that's funny in itself too. I would put out ads in local film-oriented uh, publications and online at the time too, and uh, you know, at the end, would say send us your most. Un, un, explicit, you know, un, uncensored. Uh, we want to see the worst, or you know, that you got. And people would send us like, you know, two guys sitting in the kitchen table talking. 
<laughs> so it's like, you know, have you ever watched the show? Right. So ninety percent of whatever <coughs> went out, you know. But occasionally you would find something good. I, I hooked up. I met a, a local animator. That's great. His uh, his stuff is he's insane. He's great. Man. <laughs> now, what was the it, what was the song that opened the show? That was basically uh, me and Brian on, on, on guitar, and uh, it was based around a riff from a Suicidal Tendency song. Uh, which song? Can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but it was based around a riff from a Suicidal Tendency Now, Brian was your partner. Yeah, Brian was your partner. It's, it's interesting. You know, Brian just retired from the post office after 30 something years. And we're around the same age. He's retiring. I'm starting a new business. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This goes to show you how things work, you know. Now, you guys, you guys were uh, two Droogies Productions. Yes. So, how instrumental was A Clockwork Orange yeah. for you personally? Yeah, Clockwork Orange was probably the film we've seen the most. I've seen it at least 24 times in a theater before video release. Yeah. Wow. wow. Uh, the Island nice. Theater here on Staten I remember Island. the Island. We used to show it every Friday night. Nice. Or We'd be there. They'd also week. do the Rocky also Horror Picture Show. Yeah. Uh, I've seen it every week. We would go to the Island Theater. That's a lot of And they'd really also do the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Why did you mention Rocky Horror? Because I always look at Rocky Horror as what kind of ruined midnight movies. You know, before Rocky Horror, there was all kinds of great stuff, you know, especially movies like Eraserhead, uh -huh. or El Topo, or things like that. But after you know, Rocky Horror, now, well, it's out, that's a midnight movie, and all midnight movies were judged by what Rocky Horror was. And Rocky Horror was really great if you were into the role playing and the participation, yeah. the audience participation. But as far as just Which watching, I was. But as far as just watching, like, you know, hard to find films and cult films. Yeah. You know, Rocky Horror was not, it didn't, didn't really do it for me. You know? I, I've seen it, it's, it's funny, it's okay, and I like the references it makes, and you'll have, I'll have to admit, it's Tim Curry's role of a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Right? Yeah, Dr. Yeah, Frank ever equaled that. that. No, maybe Legend. No, 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 I don't think he's ever equaled that. So now, now with that, uh, were you and Brian uh, big fans of, of going to like, the Film Forum in Manhattan? Yes, that's an interesting story there. Every, every summer the Film Forum would run a science fiction festival. Uh -huh. Okay, so here was a chance to get to see films you'd never seen on a screen. Yeah. On a screen, you know. So we're going to see, to see a, uh, it was a double feature of uh, Earth versus the Flying Saucers mm -hmm. and... Uh, Which I, is I, a Ray I, Harryhausen movie. Yes, Ray Harryhausen. Yes. And uh, I think it was The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we watched Earth versus and uh, Beast from 20,000 Fathoms on. There's a scene in Beast where he's trying to get the authorities to go look for this monster. And he's, and he's like, you know, he's calling up the army sergeant. He's like, you gotta come down and check out this thing. And the guy said, look, professor, we get stories all the time, men from Mars, giant beasts, flying saucers. And he goes, oh, what makes you so sure there are no flying saucers? And let me tell you, Everybody in that theater erupted in the hell of applause at that line. Because yeah. we had just seen Earth vs. the Flying Saucers. Yeah. Yeah. That's the kind of experience you can't get unless you're seen in a group. Absolutely. Yeah. I, we were just showing, uh, Brian makes uh, uh, custom DVDs to show in the store. It's all PG rated stuff. But yeah. There's a lot of Plan 9 from outer space. Which one of my favorite things to do when I go into, into your shop, Hypnotronic Comics, uh, here in Staten Island. I, I noticed this as well a couple of days ago when I was there too. But yeah, you have is, to... is it, I, I, I personally can't help but always look up at the screen right. and, and what's on there. You know, even so, if it's if it's old toy commercials, which yes. I have a Especially collection guns. of myself. <laughs> Kids yeah. commercials for toy guns. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, we were there at a screening of uh, Good Nip uh, Naps. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we went to see Plan Nine from Outer Space at the. Uh, it was a theater uptown called the Dahlia. Theater and they showed just old movies and stuff. Well, they played Packed House for Plan 9 from Out of Space. And there's a line in there. Edward. Right. And there's a line in there where he says, You know, well, what have you chosen? We have chosen Plan 9. Let me tell you, everybody on his chair whipping their shirts around their <laughs> <laughs> something you can't get no. unless you see it in an audience situation. Yeah. Right? It's funny, I mean, now that now uh you've you've opened up Hypnotronic Comics yes. here in Staten Island. What's the exact address? Uh, 156 Stuyvesant Place, right across from the ferry, up those stairs on the side of our hall. Yes, if you walk out from the, the taxi entrance of the Staten Island Ferry, you can see Hypnotronic Comics directly across the Which street. Which is why we chose that. Yeah, uh, it's funny. That, that, that address is, uh, is pretty important to me and synonymous to me in my life because uh, three 
count them, three of my friends in succession owned the hair salon that was there, Babushka. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first it was Daniel Brancaccio, then it was Kevin Coyne, uh, then it was Doug and Jody uh, Santarella who owned it. Um, and I worked there as a shampoo boy for years. And I got to tell you, man, the tips for a shampoo boy on Saturday morning when old ladies are there getting roller sets and they wait until you're washing someone else's hair to put that tip in your front pocket, there's nothing like it, man. So I'm glad, I'm glad that that space now is 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 occupied by something. Right. That is, how are the Wanakas treating it? Uh, okay. Yeah. Actually, you know, I think uh, it's the type of deal where maybe it was empty for a few years and now you don't want to lose us. So yeah. He's being really nice. But I hear nothing but horror stories from the other tenants in the building about him. Yeah. You know, if I have nothing to complain about so far. Yeah. You know, I'll say this is broken, he fixed it. Mm -hmm. So I really can't complain. I, I, I love Ed's shop. I was there for the grand opening. I was one of the, uh, the judges uh, for the costume contest, which was awesome. I mean, people really, they, they went all out for it. Uh, and you also, uh, you also had the uh, 501st there as well, didn't you have a, with the, the yes, Darth Vader? He was, was totally there. professional, man. Ooh. I mean, this guy. We have a. We sell a, a helmet. No, a Darth Vader helmet. It's made by a company called Rubies. And they make like high end costume yeah. stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's looking at that and I'm saying, so what was your costume based on this? And he goes, in my organization, Rudy's is a dirty word. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> so, so they have somebody who custom makes this shit? made everything custom. Wow. Okay. So he, he actually uh, uh, took an MP3 of Vader's breathing. Wired it into the chest plate on his suit, so it's actually, you know, it's the exact yeah. sound, you know. Nice. So about halfway through, he, I go, mean, "Where are you going?" He's going downstairs. He goes, "Costume change." Like, what? He comes up the stairs. You know, you know, at the end of Jedi when he takes off the helmet, it's got that face. That yeah, face. yeah. He's got that mask uh, yeah. on. Oh, they have a helmet. Yeah, oh, it looked incredible, man. And it was incredible, man. The guy would, and then just like when he walked up the stairs, and everyone was like, whoa! Yeah, it was <laughs> awesome, man. It was incredible. Wow. Man. I have newfound respect for all those dudes. And, man, uh, and it would have been more, we expect to have stormtroopers there that day, too. But there was a big charity function upstate that same day, and all they could do was Vader, and I, I can't complain. Well, like I told you, we, we had asked them to come one free comic book day, and the same exact thing happened. There was a charity function, and they, they were only going to send like eight guys. Right. But they backed out. Because yeah. charity, which is awesome, it's, it's an awesome thing about the final first that, you know, that they're, they're basically a bunch of people, a bunch of grown ups cosplaying, but they got the priority straight. You know, yes, <laughs> and they were from the New Jersey chapter, uh -huh. and I found out there's chapters across. Well, the actually, the, the the chapter that was supposed to come here was a Long Island chapter. Isn't that the first and, one? Uh, yeah. No one stormtroopers here. Let, let's start a five zero first on Staten Island. Um, there, there may be one. I mean, it, it may be like three guys. You know, like a, a, a Wookiee, an Ewok, and a fucking biker scout. Right? Hey. They're doing that thing, man. Much love to the 501st. I so hope one of them is Chris Sorrentino. <laughs> Ghostbusters. So, so now, t tell, us, tell us more about Hypnotronic. When, when, when did you decide that this was going to happen? You well, enjoy? Yeah, Joy and I, uh, my woman and I, we were, we were uh, just, you know, Sitting on the fence for a couple of years about what we were going to do, you know. Which can be very painful. Sure. <laughs> Especially on a picket fence. <laughs> but uh, it, was, I, it was a sad turn of events when my friend Artie, who owned a, a Krypton. Yep, we've, spoke, we've spoken there. about Artie on the right. show, yep. And uh, he, he went under in Sandy, and he told me, I'm not reopening, I'm through. And yeah. that's when we decided, okay, now we, now we just get off the fence, <laughs> you know, because, uh, you know, there were, there were three, now there's two, now there will be three again yeah. on Staten Island. You know? mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't want to oversaturate a, a limited market. Oh, yeah. and I think what sets us apart from most of us, because we're really only half comics. Right. Uh, the other half is all merchandise. You know, T-shirts, DVDs, uh, posters. Uh, you get some great collectibles there. Yeah, and, and oh, and new and vintage. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's the thing to me that I know when people come in here and they're looking for vintage stuff or, you know, even like certain toys that we may normally not carry, certain novelties and whatnot, always right away I, I let them know about your shop. And I tell them, I say, look, I, I know about what's here. I, I, I'm not going to lie and act like I know about vintage stuff. I'm like, you have to go talk to Ed. Yeah, I've been you know? selling this stuff online since 99. Jesus. Well, my eBay rating is well over 10,000. Dude, as far as <laughs> I've been selling a little bit of stuff. I know a little bit about everything. 
in those in those fourteen years, I've sold a little of everything, but mostly toys, collectibles, and that kind of stuff, because that's what I know a lot about, especially non-sports cards and things like that, because that's what I used to collect. Would you say you're more of a sci-fi fan or a horror fan? I'd say right down the middle. You know, yeah, that's hard. But I, I, I made a slight edge to sci-fi because you know. I grew up with that stuff, but I was the guy that would take the uh, uh, photon torpedo sound effect and record it on a reel-to-reel -reel and play it out at people. <laughs> <laughs> like I was shooting that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was to watch it. What's that? What's that sound? Where's it coming from? You know. I mean, like, how how important to you when you're when you're when you're watching an older horror or sci-fi, especially? How important is camp to you? Well, it's good when it's, uh, you know, if John Waters once said, who I met and was a great guy, by the way. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I, him. I love John yeah. Waters. He once said, if, you know, if something is, is bad, well, then it just sucks. You know, but if something is supremely bad, if it's monumentally bad, then it becomes better than good. <laughs> so that, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I believe that. So, so that if, with him saying that, yeah. I, I, I'm going to say film, and you tell me if this falls into what he said. <laughs> Roger Corman's fantastic film. Oh, uh, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you've seen it. We, we saw it in a song. <laughs> We ought to get this! <laughs> Richard's arms, I mean, come on. And, some, and the Captain America one, too. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, yeah. oh, Groans. <laughs> Runny cocks. I mean, guys, I, I, studio audience and at home, if you have not seen either of those films, do your best to get a hold of them. And quite frankly, don't, don't email us. Yeah. Get in touch with Ed. <laughs> Ed. Ed will probably be able to get it for you a hell of a lot quicker well, than we like, can. The whole thing, the whole... The funny thing about that is that movie was only made so that they could keep the rights to that to, right. to Fantastic Four. Yeah. It's literally we have we have two months. Yep. Here's a hundred grand. Just yep. give us something. It's hey, Roger Corman. Do <laughs> <laughs> right now. Have you ever met Roger Corman? No, no. I've met a couple of people like him, but no. But you know, speaking of bad, so bad. <laughs> That's a very interesting. Thing. Yeah, I met a couple of people. Yeah, like Roger like, Corman. Uh, <laughs> Sam Arkoff, uh -huh. things like that. Oh wow. But, yeah, but uh, you know, speaking of so bad, it's good. I recently had had to see some clips from the Star Wars Christmas special. Oh yeah, uh, I love oh, that nice shit, day. man. I can say no more. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's funny. I um, there was a movie. I it was on Showtime recently, but I always considered one of the worst movies ever made, um, and when you're talking about so good it's exquisite, is um, Jane Austen's Mafia. Never it's saw it. from the late 90s. Uh, had, Never seen it? No. Had Jay Moore. It's, it's, a, um, it's a spoof it's, it of like, all gangster the movies guys, from the 70s and 80s and 90s. Like casino. Wait, it's a comedy. Oh, I remember yeah, that one. one. Oh, I've comedy. seen that one. Had I know Yeah, that. Lloyd Bridges played the Marlon Brando the guy played the, the Godfather did, character. And what's what's amazing is that it yeah, failed. Yeah, was that what they were going for though? You know what I'm saying? Oh, like like scary movie. Yeah, exactly. Scary yeah, movie but mock, but what's movies. what's amazing to me? See, if it's not funny, then it's yeah. Is that it fails on every single level? <laughs> every joke is so bad. Every get like there's a point oh, where man. someone's someone's making <laughs> someone's making pasta sauce and they pull meatballs out of a tennis ball can. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's and and every every joke is so bad. That you laugh at, oh my god, someone wrote that, yeah. and a producer thought it was good enough to film. Right. And like, every single level, yeah. oh but my well, god, how did this actually get made? But as soon as somebody says, worst movie ever made, I want to see it. Right. Yeah. You know, no, I want to see it. Now, I recently uh, seen something uh, called The Room. Oh, oh yeah! yeah. That yeah. talk about yeah. Midnight Oh, hi, Mark! And this is going <laughs> under, the, under the reputation now, worst movie ever made. Yeah. I still think Plan 9 is my favorite worst movie ever. Yeah, but there's people who go yeah. and see The Room like it was yes. a Rocky Horror yes. Picture yes. Show. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there was another one, I think it was like a, a sequel to like Critters or Ghoulies, like oh, Ghoulies wow. 3 or Critters 3. And they made it, it's, it's got such a cult following as being a bad movie. They made a documentary just about the fans for this movie. I, wow. It was playing up this film festival last, yeah. week, uh, last year. 
I know. couldn't believe it. Yeah, but it was something like Ghoulies 3 or something like that, or Critters huh. 3 or something, yeah. something like that. But I've never seen that movie. So not to put you on the spot, but if there is a mission statement for Hypnotronic Comics, what would it be? You know, it's kind of like industrial filming. It's shit we love. It's shit we deem worthy. Right. You know? <laughs> but I'll give you an example. You know, we'll go through a catalog of like 200 items. We'll pick 12. <clears throat> right. You know, because sure. it's only the things we, we really like. You yeah. Know? And, and I know we're going against Sarko's advice, you know, don't go for what you like. Yeah. <laughs> you know, go for what you think is going to sell. Uh -huh. We're trying to find a middle ground in that. You know, I think a lot of people, we've, we've found out a lot of people think like us. You know, it's so bad, it's good, it's yeah. so cheesy, it's so it's great, you know. So we, we try, we've got to trust our, our heart and our feelings, but we're going by the top ten list, too. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I mean, that's why for me, I've always said that uh, comic book stores should be run like your local bar, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and you've got to make people, you know, feel ultra welcome when they're there. And right. Uh, you got to remember names, and a lot of times people are just such characters you can't help but fucking remember their names. Anthony Dark. Yeah. Who <laughs> frequents both of our shops. Uh, okay. and, and the thing that I've always loved, and the reason I wanted to get into comic book retail, is that there there is no cookie cutter shop. You know, uh, there's such a passion behind what we do and what we love that. Everybody's personality shines in their own shop, and I think the people that are successful at it are the people who let their personalities right. come through in their shops, and that's why I think you guys are going to do great. Right. We, you we, know. we uh, not only care. Somebody said we are kind of like a cross between a comic book store. Uh, Hot Topic and Spencer's. <laughs> because we do have a little bit of that in there. We have some goth jewelry and yeah, cool skulls and stuff to wear and stuff. And uh, uh -huh. you know, you'll find like practical jokes like that gun that says bang. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so we have something like You know, I bought a I bought a double mint gum lighter <laughs> from you. Yeah, and, and I was so I was so excited about it and I got in the car and I went to light my cigarette and then I realized I had to fill it. <laughs> we had one that's like a shell on a bullet. It looks like a big shell and it's uh -huh. a lighter. Yeah. One of our top sellers. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone loves that bullet lighter. You know? <laughs> and we think of pens that look like hypodermic <laughs> needles. Right, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Like that, you know? People love that stuff. You know? So, uh, the, Tony, Tough Tony wanted to uh, mention his uh, first experience at Hypnotronic. So, go ahead, Tom. Uh, Tony, so, don't be too long winded. No problem. <laughs> So there I was. Um, Thank you. Great. Asshole. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. So there I was on Stuyvesant Street, <laughs> managing my erection as per sound effects provided. Oh, God. Thanks. Okay, and whatever it well, takes to imagine. Way. All right. So, yeah, da, 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 da. so I'm walking around. I'm dealing with uh, unemployment shit because I had uh, beaten my former employer in a $4,500 case. Hell, yeah. So what happened was I had to, I ran out of money. In order to keep getting what they consider to be emergency benefits, like $100 a week, they made me go to Stuyvesant, sit through the most boring 45 minutes of a, like, how to get the shit done kind of thing. Talk to me about what jobs I could be considered for, because they think I'll be a great 911 operator. How did you get to Hypnotronic? <laughs> so, I got to the point where it's like, uh, fuck it. I got like an hour left before my thing expires in the parking limit, so I start walking around. And I see, and then I literally, I get surprised. I see a zombie in the window, and I'm like, "What the fuck?" And I look around. And it's like, "Hypnotronic Comics." I'm like, "Okay, sure, why not?" And walk in, and I just absolutely love like. Maybe the whole that should way be your tagline. <laughs> Hypnotronic Comics. Okay, sure, why not? Zombies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Zombies. Okay, sure, why not? But like, uh, it's awesome. Like neat little set. It's like that whole like. Uh, Friendly rapport kind of thing. He even came to me after a few minutes, started talking about the, the books I was picking up. Everything. It was actually at that store I picked up myself the tenth anniversary of. Uh, I picked up myself. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a, a great used book selection, and they're all kept in like very good condition. I got myself a tenth anniversary Dark Knight Returns trade, which I still consider one of the crowns of my collection. And out of nowhere, I had found a trade, which was actually um, one of the only Batman books that Sako had ever recommended me when we had worked in the old days at uh, Jim Hanley's, and he had loved this book because it was one of the greatest Batman books it was. And still, it, it gets me to this day it on is. how... Deacon Blackfire, baby, the cult. They're the only men that like, challenge Batman 
just mentally and spiritually down to his core. If you've never, ever, ever read Batman and the Cult, you must. Bernie Wrightson, Jim Starlin. Mm -hmm. Insane. Right. It was uh, 1988. And, uh, I mean, after Killing Joke, it was probably uh, the next most controversial uh, Batman book that people just kind of forgot about. So if you've never read Batman and the Cult, do it. Do it right away. Yeah. So, <laughs> I had picked up those two books, um, got my girlfriend the uh, first trade of Wild Last Man, and I came back to the store. I uh, surprised. And I actually saw Heather reading trade number three of Wild Last Man today. She's huh? hooked. Can't get enough of it. Love you, baby. So, I come here and I. Why is everyone laughing about that? It's just the way you said it. <laughs> oh, baby! I fucking love you! <laughs> <laughs> I got your name on my switchblade, like honey. I'm fucking like a sister. This <laughs> <laughs> man, ladies and gentlemen. That's a drunk line. <laughs> so, so to end roll off, I come back and I, I give him the train. It's like, yeah, I remember it's your favorite book. Here no, you go, kind of thing. Yeah, thank you very much, man. No problem. And I told him, he's like, where'd you get it? Oh, it was um, Hittertronic Comics, so Stuyvesant. I went to go uh, check it out. It's a nice little store. And he goes, oh, yeah. He's like, no, the owner. He's like, oh, he's like, well, how do you know? Well, he used to do uh, industrial television. He's one of the two Drews. I'm like, wait, wait. Industri it's like CTV's industrial television. And I just went, fuck, I wish I knew that. Because like I said, me and my buddy, Big Joe Brush, we used to waste hours like waiting up for the show and just enjoying the shit out of it. All like... All the classic. That's what stuff. everybody who produces a television show loves to hear that you wasted hours watching. <laughs> no, no, wasted hours waiting up for it. But I can remember my first ever trailer that I ever watched on the show was for an old movie called Fuego. Oh, yeah. Oh, Fuego! Uh, let's see. One of my favorite things, of course, was uh, Charles that Bronson's means fire. lips. Yes, Charles Bronson's lips. And of course, the random moments during sexy moments where the two of you would just be, Tits! Tits! Show us your tits! We still that. shout that to this day. And the number one moment I could say about industrial television, I learned and watched The Miracle of Childbirth through industrial <laughs> yes, television. Yes, yes, that's true. And it was so, it was kind of so random. That is the, absolutely, that was the first time I saw Childbirth through was on industrial television. And a girl who had seen, because we, in our montage, our opening, is a shot of the kid's head coming out. Yes. Okay. Okay. Girl seen it, never seen anything like that before. And she was like, oh my god, that's what it looks like. I never have it again. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so, how it was cut in was so great because we're watching like one of the trails, like one of those really bad action movies. And then like three quarters of the way in the trail, it just immediately cuts to the head crowning. <laughs> and it's just like, this is a great moment. It's like, come and watch. It's like the miracle of childbirth. I was like, wait, what, what the hell just happened? <laughs> And, and it just uh, snapped in. What I, what I want to, what, one thing I was always curious about, and I've never asked you, is when you guys, your cutaway scenes, when you guys are sitting watching it, where, where are you? Was it your your house, your apartment? Yeah, yeah, it's my basement. It was your basement. The okay. of my basement was the set, and a great story to go with that. And there's a lot of great posters yes. in oh, the yeah. background. That's what Chuck Brown Do you still own those? Exactly. You still own the They're in the basement of Hypnotronics. Are they really? Oh! <laughs> but there's a guy, uh, uh, at the time it was Keys fan, gas meter reader, comes to the house, gotta read the meter, gotta let him in the basement. So I said, meet me at the side door. I, I let him in the side door, he's like, oh my god, you're that guy! <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on, we gotta read the meter. So we gotta walk through the, we gotta walk through the set to get to the gas meter. Yeah. He sees the set. It's like he starts getting down and bowing to it. <laughs> yeah, and he goes, that's awesome. and he goes, this is where the magic happens. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, no, no. Before, before we started, and I said same for the podcast, you had said that you had a, a really good fan story. Yeah. Is that it's it? Great it's no, no. He, he mentioned before, you know, you know how he, you would watch it and people, you would be using a line from it, you know? Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, there was a, a cop. And uh, they used to watch it at the station house every every Saturday night together. Nice. So, so again, one guy was the fan. He turned the other cops on to the show. So there was one that we showed a film called, uh, parts of a film called uh, Solo, 120 Days of Solemn. Uh, Sodom. It's a uh, Italian, uh, uh, it's, it's one of the few subtitles movies that I could fully recommend because it's so outrageous. Yeah. And basically it's a bunch of old coots uh, torturing these, these young kids. You know, making yeah. them sit in bats of shit and things like yeah. that. Making them one shits and they make the other eat it. 
Yeah. Yeah. So he's and then he's like screaming he at him in Italian. He's That's screaming amazing. at him to eat it. So he keeps screaming at him, Manja, Manja. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> this cop, he, he became Manja. <laughs> They see him as Manja! <laughs> that became his name because of that show. <laughs> oh, that's fucking great. You can't write this shit. Man. No, man. <laughs> Absolutely not. Well, Ed, please give us a Twitter, a Facebook, a website, an address, once again, for Hypnotronic Comics. Well, HypnotronicComics.com, obviously. Uh, HypnotronicComics at Gmail. Uh, Facebook.com slash Hypnotronic. <laughs> uh, I, of course, so Hyp Hypnotronic on Twitter. You know, we're on all that. Uh, You're at Hypnotronic Comics yes, or at, just, Hypnotronic. at Hypnotronic? At Hypnotronic. Right. Okay, okay keep, on Twitter. Yeah, I want to keep it as short as possible. Yeah, but, no, absolutely. You know, but you have to have all that today, you know. As a matter of fact, our, our social market networking. You got to have all those things now. Nice. Uh, that's what I find the old school people that just have no idea about that and how important that stuff is. You know, because uh, right now, uh, with our limited budget, that's our marketing. Yeah. You know? Right. And we, we try to keep an engaging Facebook page. We try to do at least three minimum posts a day, sometimes right. as many as eight in a day. Uh -huh. What came in, this is a cool clip, you got to see this, you know. Uh, or so who came into the store? Yeah. You know, things I just love, I found, I, I put it up, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Things like that. I mean, it, you got to you got to engage on social media. No, All right, we're up to down. like uh, we're over 350 likes on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. In, in that's awesome. It's really good. In, in how long? Eight months. That's right. Tell you. I wish we could afford the ads. You know, you know I looked into this this place down the line, ferry ads. You have your you know those cars. I looked into that too. No, I want three thousand a month. No, it's bullshit. Ooh, With a minimum commitment of three months. Ooh. That's why you only see lawyers. Car dealerships, doctors. <laughs> Comic Book Jones does not that. at all support ferry ads. Uh, <laughs> it's a bullshit. How about if I put stickers around the ferry? Mm. Yeah. That's an ad. Okay. <laughs> I always tell kids, put them on your skateboard, not on poles, because if they want to be a pain in the ass, they could charge you fifty dollars per ticket per, per sticker or flyer they find on poles. Nah, don't be worried about that. That's, that's actually a that's a fear of mine. A place of the idea of placing stickers in certain places. We actually have somebody who worked for the parks department who put a bunch of our stickers on parks department vehicles. <laughs> and I saw the first one the other day. Me, awesome. me and the dove were driving, and she was like, "Hey," and I was like, "Oh, look at that." Dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't want to say his name, but I believe his initials are M E, father yeah. of the drink. Uh oh. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, Ed, thanks so much for coming. Hey, hey, my pleasure. Get home. Everybody, uh, please, please, if you're on Staten Island, visit Hypnotronic Comics. Uh, 156. 156. 156 Stuyvesant Place. Right across from the ferry. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Are you going to court? Uh, right. <laughs> no, no, wait, wait. I was just going to say, as I learned, the first time I visited Hypnotronic was when I was in the midst of my divorce. And I was waiting for some papers to come back. And I said, well, how wonderful that there's a comic book shop for me to kill time in. <laughs> so, if you've got a paternity suit, if you've got a <laughs> <laughs> if, if you've been drinking in public, kind of in ladies and gentlemen, please go to Hypnotronic Comics. <laughs> and bring all your disposable income. Absolutely. Yeah. If you've just won a divorce suit. <laughs> Before we go, i got to tell you the brony story. I told you this. Oh, oh, God. Yeah. oh, oh yeah. God. Brownies! All right, so oh, guy comes they've in. had a rough history on this show. Guy comes <laughs> in, I mean... Right out of Hell's Angels, bigger than me, beard, tattoos, oh, no. the vest, the whole nine yards, you know. And he's like, he wants the, uh, you know, the, the blue one. <laughs> <laughs> Rainbow I don't know, Dale. Pinky, I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. So, so I just pedal. Rainbow Dash. So, so, <laughs> right, Rainbow Dash, exactly. So I'm so you're sure you aren't interested in Fluttershy too? And he looks at me, he goes, no, that one's gay. <laughs> 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 But here's what I love about having it is a true story, and the thing that I love about having Ed on the show is that I've, I've hoped for this show is to give you insight into what we deal with as retailers. Right. Like I, I think that's really interesting, and, and 
Thanks so much for coming up, man. I really appreciate Thank it. You, Thank you. Yeah, thanks. And, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, while you're clapping, wait, wait, wait. Really before we stirring. go, actually, I just want, there's one thing I wanted to bring up with Ed here. I saw for the first time, and I am a ridiculously huge fan. Like my brother, when he was a kid, his guys were Muhammad Ali and Evil Knievel. My guy was Godzilla. Woo! And Woo! The guy, I saw the Godzilla trailer for the first time. Right. It was yeah. awesome. I fucking, yeah. I am it's so jazzed. Crazy. It's ridiculous. Ed, your thoughts on the new Godzilla trailer? It looks great, but I, you know I have to interject at this moment that uh, I'm friends with a good friend of mine called Fitz. I don't know if you know him or not, but he has one of the largest Godzilla collections I've ever seen. Uh, the New York Times did an article on uh, extreme collectors. He was in there with his Godzilla collection. Okay. Over 2,500 pieces. Holy yeah. shit! Oh, so, so then he must have the toilet paper roll that when you pull it, it growls. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, <laughs> I, I've always wanted that. Gene Hunter, one of our regular customers, uh, before he became a Captain America and a Batman collector, he was one of the biggest Godzilla collectors in, in, in the 19th. You know Gene Hunter from Cities? Remember the band Cities? I remember the singer he, Oh, he had a sick Godzilla collection. And me and my cousin went there to buy stuff from him because he was, you know, getting rid of it. And the coolest thing I, I ever saw was the toilet paper roller that when you pull the toilet paper, it fucking did the Godzilla scream. Uh -huh. That's cool. Uh -huh. yeah. But it comes full circle. My friend Fitz, I happen to have a, a, a first floor apartment I was looking to rent. He rents out my first floor apartment just last month. Okay. He moves in with his collection. Oh, shit. Every room filled. Wow. Every room. Just it's Godzilla? Six room apartment. Oh, Every God. room filled. Just oh. mostly Godzilla. 90% wow. Godzilla. No Ultraman. Yeah, some of that yeah, Toho yeah, stuff too. Yeah. But, you know, the other stuff like you don't want the Star Wars and Alien stuff. Yeah. He's bringing it into the store. <laughs> for trade credit. Good for you, man. <laughs> yeah. All right. nice. That's awesome. Hey, once again, thanks a lot. Thank you. Going back to where I originally came down here, you know, was pushing our DVDs of uh, industrial television, and I approach a lot of people, and they'd be like, "Get the fuck out of here," you know. <laughs> Sako was like, "Sure," immediately took it in immediately, you know, and as did Artie on Krypton, you know. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to thank you guys and Sako, you know, because you said yes. <laughs> <laughs> I will continue to do so.